What's up? How's it going, everybody? Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. <sighs> Woo! We did it. <laughs> we did it, guys. What time is it? 10.02, baby, and we're live. All right. <laughs> That's fantastic. My, uh, we are here and we're waiting. I know, I know. So, I schedule, so what I try to, what I try to do, and... If you guys haven't noticed, but uh, I and I will be doing more like for the future, is um, starting my 10 minute countdown timer 10 minutes before the stream is scheduled, so that boom, you know. So uh, I schedule for 10. I start the timer at 10 to 10, <laughs> right? So boom, 10 o'clock. We're here. We're live, right? So it takes a while for the notifications to go out and everyone to come in. So uh, if you're watching the replay, just skip forward like skip forward that's all i do i just skip forward when i'm watching videos man i you could spend i could spend time cutting it all into chapters and stuff sometimes I could, i'll put timestamps even in down below right um like i probably will today like on a stream like this so a timestamp i'll put in the first comment where it's uh <laughs> yeah uh, i got a haircut i did um yeah it's uh it's it feels good man actually i got i got it a little while ago um but, uh, but the haircut, I sh just shaved yesterday. I've, I shaved yesterday. I got the haircut, I don't know, two, three weeks ago or something like that. Um, let me uh, turn this baby down. Actually, you know what? I'm going to quickly check on something. One second. Okay, okay. Good. Excellent day. Excellent day. Excellent. So... Uh, today we're talking about framing X braces and like things with vaulted, like walls, uh, with, with vaulted ceilings. And, um, we're going to be talking about, you know, just stuff. I got, I got some little trip, uh, ticks and trip, uh, tits and tits and tricks <laughs> with the, with the, with the old slut track. Oh, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> you've been busy dressing out. Stressing out over the bathroom, uh, your bathroom renovation. Oliver Stone, or, oh God, Oliver Tree, baby, Oliver Tree, guys. If you don't know Oliver Tree, you you're missing out. <laughs> you're missing out. Hey, David Williams. Good morning from Colorado. Nice man, Colorado. Me too, because I'm I'm a big. I love skiing and snowboarding and stuff too. But um, I think there's some good mountains there, eh? Um, but yeah, um, what I think like I'm just, but I'm after the warm weather, but it, that's a nice, that's a neat thing. Like you guys have so much all year round fun down there. eh? like you just go from what, like, I don't know. It's crazy. It seems, seems like we got like pretty much the same weather everywhere, <laughs> you know, everywhere in the country. It's crazy. Um, I was saying yesterday, like, you know, the East coast too is really beautiful. So like BC, like the West coast and the East coast is really beautiful. Uh, but the whole middle, like everything, every province is the same. <laughs> You know, there's sure there's lots of trees, lots of lakes and trees, and which is very nice. Um, but it's it's like yeah, it's the same everywhere. You know, you get the prairies, you know, like the flatlands. Um, but and you got we do got the mountains coming through as well. Um, but yeah, like it's there's there's also little mountains everywhere. Like we got the Laurentian Mountains that separate Quebec and Canada, and then um, you know just stuff. So yeah, so Dibs, man, Dib. So Dibs is uh, renovating a bathroom. And that's, that's, I, I know I shouldn't be touching the microphone stand. That's a bad habit. Okay. Um, so yeah, Dibs is, is renovating a bathroom. Hired contractors, right? I, I'm assuming, right? You hired contractors to do most of it. Um, it's beautiful. Looking great so far. I, I, uh, I love the idea because that's exact same. I can't believe it too. I had the same idea for my bathroom upstairs to do the wall. Like, I want to tile the entire thing. I'm going to tile all around the whole wall. Right, like the, all the walls. I'm tiling the walls all the way around. Uh, it's gonna look awesome. And um, yeah, yeah, nice change. You know, and that's a, that's the thing too. Like I, 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 I like living in say Florida, for example. I mean, you got you got hot weather and and rain and um, like hurricanes and stuff like that. Uh, the the nice thing that is kind of nice having the the change. That is for sure. Um, it's just so, it's just so, I don't know if it's like, 
So I, I don't know when I when you're back in geography and uh, in high school, they taught us the um, that the equator it shifts, right? So it's constantly shifting and moving, and so and that's the cause of like the melting of the polar ice caps, and uh, like that's what you know. That's kind of like I think they blame it on climate change, but what what really is happening I think is uh, the equator shifts, and so it's just basically so those ice caps are melting. Well, they're gonna melt and then they're gonna form somewhere else like it just shifts right so right now we are getting extraordinarily long long winters i think this one this winter was like eight months long <laughs> okay like we had a long winter um since october guys october november december january february march april so it was almost may by the time the snow like it was by spring didn't come till like may this year uh, so that's seven months of winter. That is insane. More than a half of year in winter. Like, dudes, there's something wrong with the like the the, the weather. It's changing. It's very crazy, very crazy. Um, and that, that you know that's why I just I can't stand it anymore. So, hey, Elo, my man, good to see you, bro. Good to see you. So. I'm getting set up. Uh, I got uh, this is a this is my interview table as well, so it's um, it's set up so I can have up to two guests live with me, so three people in total. Uh, let me see, let me see. I got a, I got an overhead shot. <laughs> like I said, it's a, it's a bit of a mess, of course. I I'm tidying up. I got to put a lot of stuff up there, but I got lots of space to work in. I got a green screen set up over there for thumbnails. Um, I got all this space to, to work in over here. Uh, I just got to get all that stuff up to the loft and that'll be all open. I'm doing that today after the stream and then I can have three guests around the table here and that's why I got the, um, oh, the audio is cutting out. Oh, okay. Hold on. Uh, is anyone else having audio cutting out issues? Cause, uh, if that's the case, it could be, I, I have to turn the volume down. Video working good. Okay. So hopefully that, hopefully that, nope, audio is good. Oh, okay. Okay. So I just, I just turned it down a little bit. So I hopefully, uh, I, cause I was, I was watching the replay from last night. I'm like, oh man, this new, oh, so, so Elo, I got two of these uh, new Shure microphones, right? I got two of these setups here. Uh, and um, yeah, oh, it could, if, if, if it's just the music that's cutting in and out, then um, I, I, it could be um, the, the, the computer it's playing on as well. But I don't know. We'll see. It should be okay. Um, so yeah, I just to turn it down. Maybe I, if 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 you guys uh, can't hear me or need to, me to turn the mic volume up, please let me know. I'll, I'll turn the mic volume up. Um, but yeah, so I have I do have a live guest coming. I'm gonna I'm buying the Black Magic Quad HDMI, the capture card, the new capture card, because I have I have more than one camera now. So um, I want to be, be able to have you know close ups uh, for each attend, like interview person and stuff. So. It's gonna be cool, man. We're working on it, dude. Uh, and, and I've been watching your streams as well, Elo. Just, it, I know I haven't been like, I don't always participate, but I, I do watch. Materials were hard to get. Uh, well, not hard to get, just hard to get in a fit state to use. Yeah, okay, I understand that, I do. Um, so materials is an issue for, uh, it's a big issue uh, right now. And the, 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 uh, is it really? Is it cutting in and out, guys? For... Is it buffering again for you guys? I don't know what's going on. I might just stop using vMix, man. I don't know what's going on. This is just really frustrating. I, I changed all the settings again this morning. No, it's not your end. I don't know what's going on. I don't understand this. <sighs> I don't understand it, man. I, I don't even understand it. I don't, I don't. I'm really frustrated, guys. I'm really frustrated with this. Oh, my goodness. I, I've changed the settings again today. 
Uh, and it's still not working. That's fantastic. Uh, I was watching the replay from last night. And it was awful, absolutely awful. Um, I can't. I like. I couldn't. I mean, it couldn't. I just stopped counting how many times it cut. It cut out. It dropped frames. I just don't understand it. But yeah, if you hit the reload button, it should work. I'm sorry, you have to do that. Like, I don't know what to do at this point. Like, yeah. I, I think so. I, I do. I think so. I, I might have to just go back to OBS. I don't know. This is just the most frustrating thing. I, I, I'm, I just don't get it. I don't understand what's going on. I don't even know. Like, why? Why? I wonder if I should um, drop right down or something to... That would be awful, though. I wonder. Because there's no point. Like, honestly, like, what am I going to do? Like, I, I'm going to be talking to you guys, trying to, uh, um, stream labs. Yeah, I used to do stream labs. I, I did. Um, but the, the, I like, it's, it, I like OBS just because OBS is a little more advanced. Um, and, and because I know how to, how to program it properly, um, it, um, you know, it works really well for me. Uh, like I, I, it's low on resources, you know. Uh, I'm so sorry, dudes. It only happened twice. Okay. Uh, man, like now I got the green. I don't know why. What is going on? I don't know. I just don't. I can't figure it out. Um, I might. I'm just gonna maybe. Maybe the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach out to VMix because they're really good, and um, I'm gonna send them my computer specs. And um, and and just ask them, verify what exact what what settings am I do I need to be using here? Uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna write a note just so I don't forget, okay? Because you know me, Mr. Forget, forget. Because I I'm so sorry. It, it's got it is so frustrating to watch when it's doing that. Um, Okay, one sec. Well, I need a notepad built into my desk, right? I do. You know what? Like, like just like a little, like, like a, I could build a thing that like, slides out, you know? Just just slide it back in, you know. I, I actually got a notepad on my phone. I should just maybe even use that. You know? I'm gonna uh, keep an eye on the stream right now. I'm keeping an eye on it on my phone because that'll tell me when it's buffering. And uh, then I can uh, pause or something until it stops at least. And then I can, you know, if I'm explaining something or whatever then um, it is it is what it is, right? I can stop, but <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so, uh, how's the video looking? It looks, oh, I got low quality on there. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff, yeah, man. I don't, it's so weird, it's so bizarre. I've been streaming for so long, and just like, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just don't get it. But anyways, let's get on with it. Issues again. Yeah, Court. <laughs> I know. Hey, good morning, love. Yeah, man. I I looks good. Yeah. 1080 60 looks good. Well, the video is good. That's good. We are making some progress here. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, moving on, dudes. I got the NDI up. And let me see here. I want to see. I want to try one more thing too. Actually, let's send that. Let's send that. Is that fixed? Yeah, that's fixed. So take. Good. 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 So that should automatically disappear as well. Yeah. Uh, you can. You can up the quality uh, to 1080-60, Courtney, on the with the gear icon. But 
Yeah, let's get on with the story. Hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna get a second. Um, I'm gonna get a second stream deck. I'm gonna have one for sounds and one for uh, um, like video. One for audio and one for video. That's that's it. I've decided. I'm getting a. I'm getting another stream deck uh, or a bigger one that I, that I can divide. You know the the big one. How you can divide it. I'll, I'll put one side audio and one side video or something. You know, that'd be sick, right? <laughs> nice, buddy. All right. So I got a video queued up here. And more more money. More money, more money, more money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, and also, oh, I hear the little dude. Hold on. Hold on a second, guys. I'm, you want to see the little dude? Uh, whatever, he's, he's, he's got underwear on at least. Come here, bud. Come say hi. If you want. Say hi. What's up, dudes? What's up, dudes? <laughs> Look how big this kid is. There you go. There's an update on the kids. <laughs> you guys got to see Emilio last night, and uh, she's huge. Spending money again. I know, Dibs, hey? Figures, uh, she's here, and I'm talking about spending money. She, you know, yeah, she's the, <laughs> she's the accountant and everything, so yeah, she, gets, um, she keeps track of it. <laughs> All righty. Uh, where is this thing? Okay. So here we are. Uh, we we kind of, if you were here last night, we this is the video I was playing. I just wanted to check and make sure that uh, we could, you could see it clearly and things like that. So actually, now that we're going this way, maybe like this or something. I gotta make sure I'm in queue, but then I got the stupid shadow. But oh well. Okay. La ah. <laughs> He's a he's a good boy, yeah. He he, I mean, both both of my boys are good. Both all the kids are good. Be nice when when absolutely everything is wireless, eh? <laughs> Make sure I'm here. All right, anyway, so um, they are the best, absolute best. Uh, I I love it. I love being a dad. Um, it is the best thing ever. Um, I don't know what I would do without them. Honestly, they're so awesome. Yeah, yeah. See, oh, like, don't tell her that, Dibs. Don't tell her that. Don't tell her that. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't be telling her that. Oh my God. So the, these trusses here, okay, you can see how they join or they land on the wall. So the, the, the problem in this situation here is uh, the, 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 the walls weren't level and, they, and, and, the, and then things weren't squared off to, at the, from the beginning, like from the base plate. So they're all twisted, eh? Like not like totally twisted, but they don't fit properly. And these plates here are all overhanging, right? So they gotta be grinded back. They gotta be cut up here and grinded off on both sides. Every single truss in the entire house. <laughs> Crazy. This here is a clip, right? Clip, it's, it is flat stock. The best type of clip. The best clip is if you can get it flat stock. Now, if you, if you can't have flat stock, you can easily use track or stud, right? I prefer stud because it's uh, cheaper than track. Um, and, and uh, yeah, it's st or stronger, sorry. It, it's got the, the, the flange with the rib, so it doesn't bend. Like, it very, it's very hard, much harder to bend, right? But 
we're we're framing this vaulted ceiling here. I just wanted to show you clips, okay? So I got clips going every two feet. One here, one here, you know. Um, and this these these trusses are all out of um, I think it's got to be like 16 or 18 gauge. I, I I know everything else is is 16 gauge, but the the trusses are um, I think they're a little lighter. You know what I mean? The wife's our accountants. Absolutely, right? Like it just it just it makes sense because uh, yeah, like you you need to have somebody watching over your money, right? Eh? Because uh, uh, otherwise, I would just spend everything, <laughs> right? <laughs> So yeah, it's good to have have the that support. Uh, she's very good at it. So <laughs> I appreciate her for that as well. So, um, but yeah, dude, it's it's uh it's you got to be careful with your with your money, eh? Like, oh man. <laughs> I um hey man, Chickadar, what's up, bud? How are you, man? Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome, man. So good day. Good seeing everyone this morning, man. That's awesome, buddy. Right? That's awesome. The, okay, so basically what I do, the first thing I do is we're, we do the ground layout on the ground, obviously, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to find uh, where the top track lands and uh, determine if, if it lands on a truss and you can actually um, frame it, like, or attach it to the bottom of the truss and you're good right now let me i want to show you a couple things though all right so if if the if the wall if the dot if the wall is going uh to land anywhere from like halfway uh hold on that doesn't make any sense anywhere from halfway or less put a clip <laughs> put a clip right um it, it, it you it, that's my rule anyways okay so you i've seen lots of guys they'll have like an inch an inch on the the truss and they'll just screw it to the truss but uh which is which could be fine too i i suppose but uh it, like depending on the the thickness of your wall like six inches six inch walls like this definitely i don't i don't like that too much it's just too easy to put a clip in and um but you don't need friends like me. Of course, I need friends like you, Dibs. You're a good, you're a good friend. You're, you're, you're awesome to have around. What are you talking about? <laughs> you're a joker. <laughs> I um, um. So yeah, I, I find out where the wall goes, and then I put I I just go ahead. I mark it out on the stud. And I put clips every two feet. And um, sometimes too, what I'll do is after I've put the track on. I'll find out where it lands and then put another clip to uh, pick up the uh, to pick up the other track. Okay, now you don't have to do that, uh, but it's 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 pretty good pretty good practice to do. Um, you 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 want to have your line snapped out on the ground, okay? And then you're gonna end up using so on this here. This is such a huge vault. We're using one and a half tracks at the top to every one on the bottom, right? So we're going um, 15 feet of track to 10 feet. So uh, that's 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 something like, man, if you don't, if you miss that, say in the estimate, like uh, you, you could have some issues. Did I just see my mom in the chat? Did I see mom in there or no? Oh, okay, I thought I saw my mom's icon. Now, uh, you can use, on this situation, we are using standard track and that's uh, only an inch and a half flange, so you got to be pretty accurate. You got to know exactly where to put your tape measure to get the number um, to get the cut. And I'm I am going to show you that. I do have a part here that that shows you that. Um, let me just keep going. If you guys have any questions uh, along the way, please ask. Eh? I uh, a lot of vaulted stuff in here. A lot of vaulted stuff. Right on. Okay, so you see the channel in here as well. This this is also a good example of when when the top track when the wall lands on a truss, you don't need clips. Here we don't have clips, and and you see right here in the corner how it's just kind of oh how it's just kind of like hanging over a bit, 
it's only like an inch to an inch and a half in the truss. That's good. That's lot. That's that's plenty secure, and um, you know, plenty secure. So, well, you got to do all your layout on the ground, and in this situation, you're you're literally plumbing up every single 16 inch center okay every one has to be plumbed up because there's no way to pull your tape and get accurate centers okay so we're pin lasering up every single one or you can line laser it as well um we're in this for this i'm using a combination Uh, this line laser, which is a Dewalt line laser, that does horizontal and vertical 360. Okay, this is a good. Yeah, I know that. Oh, so you're somebody was asking too about this is a um, this is a dynamic mic, and the right the pickup is you're you're right right here, which is uh which is yeah, I know I know I, I, I this is a new microphone, so I'm, I got to get used to it. I got to figure out how to use it like my i've used my road for so many years that i know it very very well right i know i know everywhere i know where to put it in the, in the camera i know you know i know everything right where to put my where to talk and everything so uh this is gonna be this is new and uh my goodness i i don't know i think i feel like it sounds warmer than the road like it's a little warmer you know uh and, and it sounds pretty good i i i didn't i i liked the sound it was pretty good but yeah, I got these pin lasers, okay? So you're gonna need two pin lasers at minimum, two pin lasers. And um, line lasers are great, are very, very, very helpful. Uh, when we get to the x section, I'm gonna have a couple of tips for you that are super important. Uh, or will make your life so easy, guys. You're gonna make a lot of money on X-Braces. So when I'm framing, the X-Braces are an extra 500 bucks each. So every every X-Brace pays me 500 bucks. So I can do two X-Braces in a day, plus like 100 feet of wall. So that's a pretty good day, okay? Um, and you guys will be able to do two X-Braces in a day once I show you how to do it as well, okay? It's gonna be pretty neat. Uh, so this channel here, okay, you, you put it in as you go, right? Make sure to stuff it in, pre-stuff it in your knockouts. The channel goes 4 foot, 8 foot, 12 foot, every 4 feet, right? And it has to be that way because it's to hold the insulation in. And the insulation is 48 inches long, right? Or tall or whatever you want to say. Um, so, yeah, every 4 feet, the channel goes in. This is, it's, this is just like, it just takes longer to do these because you're literally plumbing up every single stud, okay? And then on this tall wall... I have a guy holding me down, holding the bottom of the tape. And so let's say the 16s are, there's, the, oh, no, you know what? You can barely see that. Let's use the yellow maybe. Okay. So let me just say, this is my marks for six, for the 16s. Okay. Up this way. And then we got 16s coming down this way. All right. So when I'm going up like this, okay. I'm uh, I'm putting the tape actually and, th and this is this is standard track or uh, standard track so it's an inch and a half thick with the, the flange. I'm putting the my, the tape measure in the center of the the at the bottom, right? And the center at the top. But I'm taking the number from the left side, okay? From the left side. Do you understand that, guys? Does that make sense? So, the the tape is uh, the tape measure itself oops, is centered on the top and bottom, but I'm taking the number from the left side, obviously, because that's where it's going to hit the track first. And then going down the other way, I'm taking the number from the right side, okay, from the right side, okay, to where it hits the track first. And you're taking a tight measurement, guys. Take a tight measurement. If the stud doesn't quite fit. It's very easy to just angle like 45. The, the flange is at the top and it'll fit. Okay. You can just modify it a little bit with your snips and you're good to go. Um, you just got to know where to get, where to place your tape measure. If, now, I hope that makes sense. If, if anyone's confused by that, please let me know. So there's another situation 
uh, where you're using, like, especially on an exterior wall, guys. Like, so imagine this was an exterior wall. Some some studs are uh, like two to two and a half inches the flange. Okay, these are standard small inch and a half flanges. So that's why I can put the tape on the center read to the right or the left. Now, if the studs two inches thick, the flange. Okay, you you have to put your tape measure on the like. So when you're going up, put your tape measure completely on the right, and and check your first stud. See how tight it is. If it's good, it's good. You just keep doing that. Just keep putting the, the tape measure to the right and reading to the left. Or sorry, the left, left. And right, right. You understand? Sorry. So going up this way, you're going to put your, your tape measure on the left side and read from the left side. And opposite going, the, going down. You're going to put it on the right side and read from the right side. You can... Once you get that first stud in, you can see, okay, is it, if it fits perfect, you're good. Just keep doing what you're doing. But if it's too big, just slightly come in like a quarter inch to the right, okay? Quarter inch, sorry, quarter inch to the left, quarter inch to the right, okay? Just play around with it, and you'll, you'll see what I mean. You'll get the number. Uh, so also, right here, you can tell we cut the channel at the top. This, this top channel here, we cut it to put two pieces in to uh and then screwed it with a, a self-tapping wafer okay so you can do that that's not a, it's not it's not nothing in the rule says that you can't do that right uh i like to put the channel in every four feet because it's perfect it's going to hold the insulation in beautifully right and it also stiffens the stud it gives us the wall more strength right so a lot of guys will skip the top sometimes you know and just basically stack the insulation on top of insulation don't do that okay don't be that guy Hey, Omar. Yeah, man. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate all you guys, you know, very much. Um, that, that's very nice, man. Cheers, buddy. I appreciate you. Uh, so hopefully the, to the music, I left the music running today. Uh, I just, I don't want it to uh, just be too distracting. I'm going to jump right into X braces right now while we're talking about the, the slope. And I'm using going to use this, this whiteboard here. So bear with me. Um... I, I, I'm not used to it. It's the first time I've had it. So we're going to go like this, okay? Whatever. If it's not perfect, who cares? Okay, they look like so. And at the, and at the tops here, they always got these funky, uh, like, uh, like these funky pieces of iron uh, on, the, on the, like, the ends here, okay? We got these little funky irons. You guys, you guys will know exactly what I'm talking about. Who, anyone who's ever done this, um, they just got these funky tabs. Um, anyways, it's more like that. Anyways, so, and then there's an I beam up here. Okay, this is the I beam at the top, and then you have concrete, concrete grade beam here. And then you're going to have uh, structural steel columns on both sides. Sorry, this is awful. I could go to the actual whiteboard and draw it. If this is too awful for you guys, I can just go to the whiteboard and draw it better. Uh, but yeah, all, anyway, so the, the, this is all attached to the column. I'm just going to show you, like, sometimes they're actually quite big, like these funky things here. So we'll just, we'll just go right over the column to make it look like it. Um, let's see. Can I change the color on this somehow? I don't know if I can. All right. It doesn't matter. So on an X brace, actually, you know what? Maybe I should just go over to the whiteboard. What do you guys think? Do you guys, you guys want me to go? That's good. Or is this good? You guys going to be able to understand me with this anyways. Okay. So basically what you do, it's not that hard guys. You're what you're going to do is you're going to put your, your bottom track on first in this situation. Okay. So one, you're going to put your bottom track on. Just awful. This is good. Okay, Gabe. Excellent. I, I this is, I do have a drawing pen too. I should get that out at some point. But anyways, it's not. That's okay. So that's your bottom track. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay out your centers. Okay. And you're gonna pull your centers 
from eat from whatever wall or what or corner you're close to okay whatever wall you're gonna carry the centers the centers do not change they do not change so you follow you carry them over and you lay them out any 16 32 48 64 80, 96 blah 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 all right there's your centers next step top track okay and this is where it's always slotted track okay slotted track okay slotted track boom 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 uh whatever it doesn't matter that's slots that's not centers okay track right this this I this is only 20 gauge what I have here but uh, this is the track that goes on the top here and this is so bad guys this is so awful uh, two studs you know what I'm gonna draw just just straight line Okay, I'm going to put one here and one here. Okay? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut. I, I've already pre-measured this, okay? I'm going to install all the track, okay? You have to put one on the top and bottom of every piece of steel, okay? And I'm going as tight as I can to, to everything, okay? I'm going as tight like in to the corners and, and hopefully this is touching you know they, actually it's not going to touch it's going to have like some kind of funky hole here actually sorry where they all join together right so you're going to have a space in the middle okay where they all join together sorry I forgot about that part but that's okay you go as close to that as you can and as far down as you can now these these end tabs down here I've seen a lot of guys cut slots so the track slips over further to the column. And that's a, that's a smart thing. That's a totally smart thing to do, okay? They just cut slots and, and slip it in. But basically you put your bottom track on, top track on, and then, you're, then you have your, your, your studs. You clamp two studs on this side. And it's simple, you just push your studs into the, or your track into the studs and it's, and it's golden. All of the bottom track and middle track is gonna be that standard inch and a half track. Okay, the only deep track is at the top. Okay, this is the first slot. So after you do this side, you do the same on the other, right? Two, two, two studs. And honestly, almost every X brace, you only got to do it. Um, you only got to move them, like two and two. That's it. Just because it'll cover both. It'll cover. Um, it'll you'll you'll get you'll get it right. I'm sorry, but before we start tracking all this out. We plumb up our stud to the top track and do the layout on the top track, okay? So we have the layout complete on the bottom and top track before before we start putting the track in the centers, okay? Because once, once this center track is in, okay, a pin laser isn't going to work to get your, um, to get your centers at the top, okay? So now that the layout's done uh, and this track is in, then I take the stud, and um, I always have a guy in the bottom and a guy at the top, right? Because it's it's high, right? So you we're usually on a lift, right? So we'll clamp it on the center, on the 16 in the bottom and at the top, and then just with a marker, mark it. Mark all the track. Move it over, mark all the track. Move it over, mark all the track. Move it over, mark, mark all the track for all the centers, okay? That way, now... We do the same thing like I said before, okay? All of these middle studs, we're, we're going to put our tape measure on the center or, or to the left, going up, okay? Depending on the thickness of the flange. So this is two studs screwed together, okay? Two studs screwed together. But just imagine, this is the flange, okay? This is the flange. That is the, the thickness, okay? 
So you got your flange here. You got this is your soft side, soft side, and the front is the hard side, the hard side. Okay, so just imagine that's what I'm talking about when I flange. So and the track is angled like this. Okay, and depending on which way the stud comes from, okay, it's gonna hit. It's gonna hit on the uh, if it's going up, it's gonna hit on this corner, right? First, so that's the one we're cutting off. That's the number we want. Okay, that's the size of the stud we're cutting. And if it's going down, okay, it's the hard side facing out. Okay, because we're drawing our centers this way. We'll just just for shits and giggles, right? But yeah, so when it's coming down, okay, now your your hard side is hitting, and it's it's a little more critical when you're going uh, downwards because if you're off a little bit going the other way, it's a little it's a little more critical when when the hard side is 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 facing and you're going down when you're facing down, okay, and th that situation is always going to happen whether you're going this way or that way, right? Because if if you're you can always clip the the, uh, uh, the the flange on an angle okay but if it's hitting the, the hard side that means you got to cut the whole stud so keep that in mind okay the direction of your studs are always pointing hard side right so this pretend this is the stud we're using this one hard side uh, is always facing the direction you pull your tape from so guys uh, I've seen a lot of funky stuff, okay, where you, you, you're, you're always going to shoot a stud to the column, okay? All right. You're going to shoot a stud. <laughs> That's my little pistol, my little shotgun. You shoot a stud to each column on both sides as well, okay? Shoot a stud here and shoot a stud there. Now, uh, this is... This is um, you're gonna have spaces now in these corners. Actually, you know what? I could just use this one here, duh. So you're gonna you're gonna have spaces in the corners. I don't like that one. That color is no good. Yeah, that pink pink just shows up. Okay, you're gonna have spaces here, 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 and in the middle. So what we do is what what we can do is I, I'll put a track across the middle okay from one track to the other track and i'll put a track here as well okay um i will sometimes kick a track over to the studs that are shot onto the uh onto the columns okay at the top and bottom that can happen you can do that okay just you can get creative just putting steel in where the holes are Okay, but where the where the pink is, that's very typical to have gap. Okay, don't be stressed; it's totally normal, and don't worry about don't worry too much about it. Share the screen. Let's see if, how do I share the screen. I wonder. Oh no way! Dude, that is sick. That is sick. <laughs> There's the screen, man. That is really cool. That is really cool. So if if it's probably changing in real time too while I'm while I'm changing it. That, that is genius, guy. Thank you for that. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm so silly. Dude, I'm so sorry. You mean oh, you guys couldn't even see what I'm talking about. What a dummy. What a dummy. Oh my god. I'm I'm a real winner. <laughs> okay, let me go. Let me redo that. Oh. Uh, what did I do? I screwed up. Uh, let's screw that. Or no, I need to go there. Okay, my bad. I'll redo that. I'm so sorry. Jeez, what a guy. What a guy. All right. Uh, so anyways, what I, w what I was kind of getting at was... I'm such a, such a boner. Oh, my God. Okay. You're going to have gaps at the, at the corners. Okay, and at the center. 
Yeah, right? I know, you get talking and you're, oh my God, this, it's it's crazy. Like, you know, it's, there's a lot going on. It, 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 I try to automate as much as I possibly can, right? But uh, my goodness, what a donut. What a donut. Okay, so what I do is I, I, I kick, um, I kick studs over, right? I kick, or I kick tracks over, okay? To the, to the, to the, um, uh, to the studs that are shot to the columns, okay? Because there's a column here or in a column there, right? So uh, there's a stud there. Yeah, there's a, yeah, that's cool. I shared it. So somebody else is on. That's cool. Um, that's really neat. That's actually really neat. <clears throat> so, and that's perfectly fine, okay, guys? And then so with the tracks, the tracks that are coming down, um, down, the, down the X, like the crosses, okay? What I'll do is um, I'll show you. These ones kind of are uh, the inside ones connect a lot. This is getting out of hand now. Uh, is kick uh, kick a track over like there and there, okay, as well, and that gives me a little more um, like a little more steel to screw drywall dense glass to. The more steel you can get in, the better. Now, I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, uh, it, that's that's the quick and dirty on a on a crazy um, online whiteboard. But I've been trying to, um, yeah, trolling time. Yeah, yeah, troll away, guys, troll away. <laughs> uh, I've been trying to get a, an in uh, like a. I've been trying to get a. Uh, yeah, if anyone's actually framed and, and been there they they, they can kind of see what i'm talking about you know what i mean so that's great so yeah you get your bottom track on plumb up your top track second right get get all your centers laid out on the top and bottom and then shoot studs to the columns then put these studs in and get all your center tracks on Okay, you put two studs here and then move it over to this side and do this side. And then you can use the, a stud to, to get your center marks down, uh, down the center tracks. Right? Just use a stud. <laughs> it's so easy. It's so easy. Once you get it, that once you do it one time, it's so fast. Just do it the same way every time. I can do two of these a day, guys, with just one partner, one guy, and I can do two of these a day and 100 feet of wall. I know people that, that takes two days to do these. It's crazy. I don't get it, but it, I've seen guys take multiple days doing one. So if you can get fast at X braces, guys, on exterior framing, that's where your money is, buddy. That's where your money is. Yeah, I charge $500 per X brace, 500 bucks, right? So... Um, I charge like my, my, my linear footage for all the wall. And then on top of that, I, I charge 500 bucks. Boom. Per X brace. Yeah. Only labor. That's, that's my piecework. That's my piecework rate. So on a typical exterior wall, I'm charging, um, 650 to 950 a foot. Uh, for regular walls, and then 500 bucks for every X brace. That's that's basically it. And then the parapets is extra. Parapets I go 15 dollars a foot. Okay. Any questions about the X brace, anybody? And and if you're watching the replay, um, please feel free to ask me any questions um, down below. Or in the comments or whatever, I'll get back to you. So another important thing to to understand is all of this iron has to be insulated uh, both sides, both sides, outside and the inside of the X brace. It has to be insulated. All your structural steel on the exterior walls has to be insulated. Okay, all your all your I beams. Okay, so you got an I beam up here on the above. Okay, that gets insulated, R12, both sides, okay? So, and your parapets is like the same thing. You insulate a foot to 16 inches up, okay? You got to make sure it's at the roof level or above the roof level. But uh, good, that's good, man. Let's see here, where are we at? 
Let's keep going along here and see where, what we can find next. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it would take me a week, and then I would give up. That <laughs> that's funny, man. No, you would. It wouldn't take you a week, buddy. No, no, no. I'm the clown in the class clown. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? I need a I need a, a sound effect for that. <laughs> we had a new subscriber at the beginning of the stream too. I want to I want to shout out. Uh, it's probably down below in the stream elements there. Who it is? Um, okay. <clears throat> okay. Stop right here. So, same thing, guys. Uh, when you're putting a door frame in this vaulted uh, ceiling here, uh, it's just like any other any other wall. Okay? Uh, two studs on either side of the door. You're carrying your centers. You're carrying your centers in from the wall. Always. Okay? 16... Okay, 16, 32, 48 is over here, okay? So basically uh, from here to here, that's 48. Nice 48, right? Between this stud here and this stud, that's 48 inches, okay? All right, the 32 is blocked it's in the door, okay? If 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 you that's what I mean by checking your layouts, making sure that you can hook the door always, okay? So what you're going to do in this situation is you're going to put a piece of drywall, okay? Uh yeah, like this. Okay? And then a uh, butt joint or whatever. Is that 3048? I don't know. I can't remember. Maybe it's the next one over. I, I don't know. I am i can't tell. I don't got a tape measure there, but it's a little deceiving. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to hook the door with a full piece on one side or the other. Okay, generally I'll go to um, the, the short side, you know. Hey, Mandy, what's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. Welcome, welcome. And uh, the see the channel in above the door as well? So... Actually, I, I have a I have a, a, a actual video that shows you how to get that. Okay, we'll look at that too here. Man, oh man. But yeah, so channel, channel, man, channel every four feet. That's that's just, that's important. But yeah, you guys can kind of see what I'm where I'm getting with this. Um, th that track is the standard track, and um, if you're using deflection track, one of the one of the things that came up yesterday was do we screw into the slot because the slot now is on an on an angle so the solution to that is to screw the stud in at first uh, so that it's secure right you get your draw wall kind of on and you get the the studs secure into place and then before you put your top on okay take the screws out so that it has deflection right um, if you're using deep track at the top like that you also got to take an uh, you got to take three quarters of an inch off. Okay, so you find your tight mark, then minus three quarters of an inch, but you got two and a half inches to work with. Okay, uh, whereas this standard track you have um, an inch and a half, and that's it, right? So you got a whole extra inch of play. That that gives you a quarter inch of room as well for for numbers, right? So if your numbers are a quarter inch small, you're good. You're still good, right? Um, it's it's a it's a, it's a it's it's a it's nice it's nice to have that extra space that's for sure right uh, make sure you're always taking three quarters of an inch off for deflection though when you're using slot track uh, we were trying to find they don't I don't think they make the double track system anymore I haven't seen it in 20 years in in the field and uh, I was searching the supplier's website uh, yesterday and uh, hold on here that's a uh, that's another thing I want to talk about and uh, couldn't find it so all right. So when I'm when I'm framing, uh, these are like freestanding freestanding walls. Now the problem here is um, the, the 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 supplier didn't have, or I would have had to wait a long time to get 20 foot high studs. So what I'm doing here is I uh, is stacking 10 foot studs. Okay, so I have to build a wall on top of a wall, which which really really sucks. 
this is uh, we were using 25 gauge steel everywhere, but this this right here, um, it might be custom order, David. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's something I could I could reach out to uh, Bailey and ask them uh, about. Um, because yeah, they might, they might, yeah. I don't, I just don't know. So, um, but yeah, the, the, the these are so I'm stacking the wall. And what what I do, I want to back up a little bit. Where are we? All right, okay. Even even here, so I'm always thinking about drywall, guys. Always thinking about the drywall, and I, and I stop three quarters of an inch away from uh, any adjoining walls. Okay, so here is my right three quarter inch. Okay, everywhere, and I don't care if it's half-inch drywall or five-eighths. I go three-quarter every time. Okay, every time. Oh, so okay, so I. Uh, so th this here is. Um, This is an abrasive saw blade, chop saw. So an abrasive saw, and it's corded, not cordless, never cordless. That is the main tool. The main tool is a chop saw, okay? Um, okay, oh, I know Clark, Clark Dietrich has it. Oh, is that, a, is that another supplier, a steel supplier in the, in the US? Um, so yeah, and these are run you, uh, uh, I know Canadian, they're about $150 on average. So they're really cheap. Abrasive saws are really cheap guys. Um, but yeah, that's the main tool. The, the second one. The second one is a pair of snips. <laughs> okay. Red handled snips. Okay. With snips, red handled red handled for cutting steel studs okay red handle now it for vanity and for convenience the grinder i got the the i do got the hilti five inch grinder okay which is excellent okay i don't actually cut studs with this i only do modifications with it okay i only i only cut angles or slots or or whatever you know i i don't we're are we buffering are we buffering i don't want to i'm just gonna wait a second electricians and plumbers don't like my floater studs they always run their pipes and wires through and mess up my 16 inch uh center thing i know man deep so I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that for a minute, but just in, just let me finish the cutting thing. Cause I have something to say about that. Um, grinders, like I was saying, yeah, I don't cut studs and, and track really, you know, this is for quick cuts and, um, like just take making modifications or cutting or cutting sheet steel. You know what I mean? Sheet metal, sorry. The other thing I got, this is a metal cold cut saw. Okay. This is uh, designed for cutting metal, and you can get the X-cut blades for it. This is all Hilti tools, okay, cordless. Now, this is good for quick cold cuts, okay? You can't do whole jobs with these things, okay, with battery power tools. You can't, not steel stud, okay? But I got this um, for making cuts. This is, this is what I would cut, um, like, a stud or track with, you know, if I need to make a quick cut, all right? So all these tools I got, like, and this cuts wood, too. Uh, but it's it's designed for metal. It's got a, it, like wood blades spin much f like higher torque, I think, or faster or something, or more RPM or whatever. This has got more torque or something. I don't know. So th those are all the all the things that I use to cut steel with in, in, in order. Number one, chop saw, man. Chop saw is a must have. That is, if you don't have a chop saw, 
I wouldn't be looking at grinders or or cool cut saws or. Oh yeah, you need snips. Sorry, <laughs> you need snips. Snips and and a chop saw, must have, must have. Okay. Now I use the 351. This is what I mean by uh, shooting the steel to the columns and stuff. You need to use a powder actuated tool or even a battery or gas. Okay, but yeah, uh, green tabs. Okay, mostly green tabs for almost everything. Uh, we very rarely use the 460 anymore. Uh, some jobs specify the big pins where you got to use the, the 460 and stuff, but man, not 95% of the time we're, we're using green tabs um, and, uh, you know, regular pins for concrete and steel, okay? Two different pins. There's one type for steel, one type for concrete. So I hope that helps. I uh, hope that answers your, your question there, bro. Um, let me see. Where are we here? Who's that? Uh, Josh? Josh. Yeah, there you go, Josh. Hope that answers your question, buddy. Okay, so the color over green is left. Red is right. Yep. And yellow is straight. Yep. That's right. That's 100% right. Yeah. Right. Red right cutters, uh, green left cutters, and yellow straight cutters. So yellow is for cutting uh, corner beads. Green is for cutting um, sheet metal and duct. And uh, the red is for, uh, well, red too for sheet metal and duct, but uh, for stud, the red. Only has drywall on one side. Yeah, um, I, so it, it's 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 a warehouse. They they'll probably like if you can get it. Sure, use it. Absolutely, absolutely. If you can get it, um, but if you can't, I wouldn't stress. I would still just take the screw out. Um, cut your cut your studs as tight as you can, right? Three quarters of an inch down, and and yeah, just take the screw. Out. It won't matter. It won't. It won't matter. It won't. It won't. Like the studs aren't going anywhere. And uh, the other side will probably eventually be drywalled at some point when they rent out that bay or whatever. It'll get drywalled, you know. Um, but the, you only need one side just to make sure everything's secure on 16-inch center, okay? So that you can, um, like, even when you're drawing your, uh, you draw centers 16, 32 on your on your drywall, right? You just make sure at the top, all of your all your studs are at the center of your um, pencil marks, okay? And that way, when the other side is drywalled, you know everything is perfect because you have to stagger. You can't land, uh, you can't land your joints on the same side, right, or on the same stud uh, for both for for each side of the wall. It has to be different. You have to stagger both sides. Okay, so you can't drywall the 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 wall the same way both sides. Okay, you have to stagger where the bevels land. You know what I mean? The other side won't be drywalled ever. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I still, I still, I still, I don't, I don't think I would stress too much because it's a really thick track. Like you're going to be in the track an inch and a half anyways, right? So uh, at minimum, right? No, inch, yeah, inch and a half to inch and three quarters in. That's, that's a really good strength. Um, and, and yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like just, just make sure everything's on 16 inch center. Like, uh, when you're drywalling the one side and you're and it should be fine. It should be fine. I wouldn't be too stressed. If you can't get the track, don't, don't stress too much about it. Like that you got to do what you got to do. And if it's really that vaulted, cause it, that's crazy. That's really crazy. I, 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 I want to see it, right? I, I want to see it because I've never, um, like when I, when I've done, when I do stuff like that, it's, um, it's a smaller slope. Okay, and it's just, I mean, it's just for roof slope, right? The beams are angled, so the you know the the roof slopes. But um, yeah, yeah, it'd be interesting to see that. It's such a pain in the butt, eh? I was I was uh, looking back at um, uh, at the last one we did like that, and uh, it's such a pain in the butt, right? Being uh like dr to drywall, it's the drywalling is also real pain in the butt. Like, but it's it's a, like on top of the CMU like that. Okay, there, that's that thing. So, uh, what I'm doing here is I know I got 10 foot studs, so um, I'm going uh, 10 foot quarter inch, and making a mark. Oh yeah, dude, that's great, David. Perfect. Yeah, right on, man. 
Yeah, guys, you guys start, start sharing some more more pictures of your jobs on the on the Discord. I'd love to see what you guys are doing out there. Absolutely love to see what you guys are building. Um, so yeah, I, I make a mark 10 foot quarter inch uh, with the line laser, and then I put a clip right there. Just uh, this is weird, dude. You know what? You see that? See how the clip I put centered? That must have been Lamb to put that in there. What I normally do <laughs> is. Um, Oh, I think I did that to pick. I think I know. I, I know why I did that. I split it so that I can screw my stud to it. That's why. No, that's right. So if the, if the if I'm not stacking the wall, if I'm not stacking a wall, I'll just put the clip right at the line so that I know where to put my top track. Okay, I use it as a marker for my top track. But yeah, because I'm stacking the wall here, I have uh, I can put screws in the in the stud that'll be on this side. Okay. <laughs> And you can see here, guys, how also at the top, I have three quarters of an inch here as well, right? For the drywall to pass through. I didn't work. For the drywall to pass through here, right? I got three quarters of an inch. You can't barely see that. That's why. There you go. <laughs> right? So three girls are at the top. And I'm just cutting tabs, right? I'm just cutting tabs. I can cut all most of this stuff with a with a chop saw too. I'm like the chop saw ninja guys. Like the stuff I cut with a chop saw just would blow your mind. <laughs> yeah, right? You see the point now, yeah. It's nice. Oh, man deep. Let's talk about man deep. Okay, so those those buggers, guys, those buggers drive me up the wall they drive me up the wall with that crap the yeah level up the xp buddy right on dudes appreciate that yeah man i love i do i check the discord all the time uh i, w I did have a little break from it for a bit uh which was a mistake because it kind of died down but i'm back on it lots now and um yeah looking forward to um i love the discord i actually might do some live streams on the discord but once I get the website uh, finished, there's going to be a members area um, for for uh, on the website. So any YouTube member, or what whatever, um, you can you'll have access to all the stuff there, right? But yeah, it's a great way to communicate. I really like Discord. I've used it for like six years now. I've been a I've been a member of Nitro since the very beginning. Uh, I was like was like I was one of the first people to have it. So um, yeah, I've been on it for a long time. Uh, but yeah, I like Discord. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the so when you're got when you got a, trades that are messing your floaters up, uh, that's a problem. That's a big problem, and that happens a lot. Okay, you you need to train them. Okay, you need to train them, and uh, they they're always gonna bitch and complain about it. But too bad, too bad. Like. Why? Why? Why do they think we we we, we want to cater to them and make their lives easier uh, when they they make our lives miserable, right? Um, the the there there's there's this thing. If they want hard corners, okay, um, then they gotta pay for them. They they, they don't want to pay for them, but they they should start paying more for uh, jobs that. that need hard corners when i mean by hard corners is no floaters and you're putting in corner studs right so it takes more material and time to do um one of the things that you can get in the habit of doing is if you're on a job where they keep screwing you like that is my three quarter inch rule my three quarter inch rule so i can i can screw in these studs both sides top and bottom okay and there'll be three quarters of an inch space now for half inch you're gonna have a quarter inch um, gap sometimes okay but you you can uh, you can always unscrew it and, and push it in tighter okay um, or or right if it just passes straight through your um, uh, your your you're not it's not like the end of the world okay um, if it's because if it's all screwed in it's it's really strong and then there you go you got your uh, you got your inside corner stud there as well, um, but yeah, I, I've I've started screwing them in more, and um, yeah, and if I, and then when I'm drywalling, if I need to un unscrew it, then I'll just unscrew it. 
But um, yeah, don't leave them. Leaving them just floating in there, it, it could, uh, in with a crew that is like that, it could it could really mess you up. Like sometimes they got like just all this cables coming through it, like cables and like the BX and the and the copper or B or you know any kind of plumbing crap. But the uh, the, the the thing is like there actually you know what there really shouldn't be too much plumbing going through the through a floater stud I, I i'm trying to picture a, a situation where there's a plumbing because usually the plumbing is uh vertical you know um there there might be some situations where you're running it horizontal um but yeah oh yeah 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 for sure yeah no, i know i do in, in like kitchens and bathrooms sometimes but yeah so and then too you can you really uh the main thing is the electricians are real real bums they're real bums okay electricians are real bums like I'm, I'm hey Kendall K what song loud or quiet oh loud <laughs> with lots of sinks okay so maybe uh yeah so anyway so yeah you can you can start screwing them in but the the, the real issue uh comes when they start screwing electrical boxes to your floaters that that you they can't do they just simply can't do they can't they can't put um, uh, boxes on the floaters and also like backing guys uh, when they put like the wood backing in they need to um, they need to count they need to cut that back uh, three quarters of an inch for the drywall and uh, leave it floating too on the one side they don't screw that one side in it just it just kind of angled it angles itself in the wall and your floaters pushed in and then you push the backing in okay this is a drywaller's responsibility like the screw um uh, the the you know the tabs or the like i don't know we call them like, it used to be staples or whatever they are like the the tabs you know the tabs that hold the bx in place uh, they uh they, they they have to um they have to keep them off of the floater okay nothing can be actually attached and so w they have to leave enough slack okay and the, the 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 BX has to come straight in, and in turn which way, which way, okay, that it's going. You know what I mean? Oh, buddy, you don't want me singing for you. <laughs> Grizzly bear sleeping in the cave. Nope. That, I, I, you don't want me singing, buddy. <laughs> is that a hey? Is that a Canadian joke? <laughs> Buffer. Okay. Yeah, I see it buffering. I think we're back. I, I think we're back. Just wait a second. Are we back? Are we back? Jeez, man. I can't believe it's still doing this. Good. Okay. Excellent. Thanks for the heads up. I appreciate you guys in the pa your patience and, and letting me know like where there's audio stuff and issues and, and buffering. I appreciate that. Um. Hey, XP Bottle. What's up, Dougie Dog? What's up, man? Nice, man. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. How you doing, man? How you doing? Ah, that's awesome, buddy. I'll be right... I need to feed the dog. Right on, buddy. Right on. I wonder how Peter's doing. How's Peter in the wedding, the marriage thing doing? Oh, I guess I'll ask you later, but... Um... So, 14 foot tall... Uh, 16 gauge. Um, yeah, I would go like I said, a six dollars, six fifty to nine fifty Canadian. So whatever that works out to US would be the same, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I would go uh, six fifty to to nine fifty. You know, fourteen foot. It's not that tall. Um, but yeah, that that's that's they have to supply any kind of equipment like scaffolding or uh, lift or uh, and the material. Uh, but yeah, I would just I would I would go depending on the on the complexity of it. Uh, you don't you don't get too 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 much. Like so, most interior walls they start at 450, 450 to 650. We'll say, but for 16 gauge, I was I would go like nine, you know, 650 to 950, depending on how hard it is. You know, just kind of the same as a, an exterior wall. When you're going in 18 gauge and 16 gauge stud, you're that's the same as as an exterior wall gauge. So I would charge the same as I would an exterior wall. Yeah, dudes. 
Uh oh, did I get frozen? No. Nope. Okay. But um, yeah, just making sure the drywall passes through, right? Yeah, you see that I'm using multiple layers. Lasers always losing multiple lasers. You see how plumb that is and <laughs> secure that is, right? So clips. Uh, you need, then you screw in your end studs, right? And then it's track to track. Right? And, I'm, and I'm trying to carry the, like that's a, that there, this stud there uh, is going to be an example of, of, of where you unscrew it, slip the drywall through and then screw it back. Okay, there's lots of places like that. You gotta watch out for that when you're drywalling. Okay, hold on, let's stop for a second. This is a great close up here. And I think I have another one uh, after as well. But yeah, so on this flange, okay, is only an inch and a half thick, right? So what I'm doing is I'm putting my tape measure right to the middle, okay? So it actually, it, it's going to end here, okay? It's, because your tape measure is pretty much the same thickness as the, as the stud, all right? So pretend that's my tape measure, okay? I'm going to take the number from this side, okay? When we're going, when we're going up, and then when we're going down... I'm taking I'm taking the number from the other side. Okay, simple, right? It's just simple. Now, if the if the stud is is thicker, okay, like a two inch, for example, two inch thick stud, it's not going to be cut like that. Uh, shoot, you know what? I don't want to do that. Let me let me just do that again. So pretend it's a two inch stud, <laughs> right? Two inch flange. Right, we're just gonna take our measurement further. We'll put the tape completely on the left side, okay? Completely, and that's where we get our number from here, this corner, okay? Just gotta make sure your tape's on the right spot when you're to get the numbers, right? And th these you need two guys, okay? Anything vaulted or cross braces, you need two guys to do, okay? You have to have two guys. Um, you don't want to be if you do this by yourself, guys, you'll be working five times longer five times longer than you have to be if you need to wait a day and you can do something else today to get another guy tomorrow to help you do it it's gonna save you or your company whatever it's gonna it's gonna you know you just yeah you need two guys okay you need two guys to do this stuff okay you need a top guy and a bottom guy there's no question about it But yeah, you can see two of my braces at the, the top. There, there's another example right there of where I, uh, so I, I put this, oh, I put this uh, clip right at my, right at my ceiling height, right where it, right where it's gonna go, okay? That, that's kind of a, an extra bit of a marker, okay? To tell you where your heights are, okay? It's a little bit of extra layout type thing. What? That's too tall. <laughs> Isn't that wild, eh, guys? That's all window, eh? All this X here, this is all window. This whole thing. Oh. All window. Window. <laughs> like, this is like a sliding glass door type thing. Very high end, very expensive stuff. I hope I don't buffer again. <laughs> Look at that. That's the, that's what that weird uh, Max uh, lens mod for the GoPro eh? is like wild. Just like, look at that. Okay. Um. So it depends. It it, it kind of honestly it honestly kind of depends. Like if I'm like I, I I got I got kind of a mixture of both. Like I I some jobs I pay like so the guys that I work with sometimes we work by the hour. And sometimes we, we work piece work. Um, it kind of it kind of depends on who the guy is and how much he can help you. But what mainly what I do is I work out it. I normally work it in percentages. So um, out of a hundred percent, obviously, uh, I'll take like uh, 60 60 percent and give my helper or my or the guy that I'm working with forty percent. You know, that's a that's a fair split. Um, hey, you do it! Yeah, buddy! Who's your daddy and what does he do? Man, good to see you, pal! 
How you been, man? How you been, brother? That's awesome. How you been, buddy? What are you up to? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Fantastic. That is fantastic. What you been up to, man? Good to see you, pal. Uh, <clears throat> oh my goodness, dude! So I built this wall. Okay, I built this entire wall, this whole thing. Okay, in uh, I think it was like three hours. Okay, I did this in three hours. Um. We f we had to fix these things, okay? Not mine, but we had to fix the other ones, like the the top one that I that I showed you. And we only had to fix one, two, two big like two big sets, and two little ones. And it took us like four days, four eight hour days to fix the damn things, right? So the the factory, what happened was the panel factory sent. Um, the wrong, like the panels were wrong. So we had to fix them on site and it took us four days. It was crazy. You had to rip it all apart, build it again, man. And these panels are not easy to take apart. So, um, always site check your ROs. Okay. When you're doing panels, working with panels, always check the ROs for everything. Things are going great. Working on a bunch of stuff. Videos for Amazon. Nice. Music label stuff. Nice. <laughs> Do you um do you do a lot of music? I, I, I don't I don't recall. Do you do do you do a uh, music? That's great. I wonder how how's Amazon going for you? Are you are you are you doing good on Amazon? I was thinking about uh, like I, I have my my Amazon stuff all approved and page ready and everything like that. I, and I got like some products that I want to review. I just haven't I haven't done it yet. I want to start doing Amazon myself i think that's a great opportunity that i i don't know why i haven't done that yet. well i know why i'm trying to get the, this done so i get my 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 get my interview uh uh set done but well, yeah you see the boom lift working on the boom like that's crazy house eh but i love this lens is so funky this lens is so funky man like i that's what i'm just doing here like Yeah, hundred percent, Rigger. Yeah, dude, hundred percent. I'd love to hear more about that. Absolutely. That's cool, man. I'm glad that you're. Everyone's keeping busy. That's good. You can see my chop saw set up down there. Um, oh, that is so cool. Hey, man, you're more than welcome to share a link for your music here and post it in the Discord, man. Hundred percent, post it in the Discord. Uh, so I'm up on uh, I'm up twenty I'm on two sections of scaffolding in a in a three step bench up here, uh, and uh, you have you have to be tied off on this site. So these these braces are what I'm talking about when I when I say the um, the studs the stud clips right here. You see these ones here. You can use studs, right? You just cut the tabs out. You just cut these tabs out, and um, you cut them to fit. Right, so the flanges are tight. The flanges are tight. These are really good braces, guys. Very strong. The best kind of brace is a stud, believe it or not, the best. The fastest way to do it is using flat stock, but the best is using stud. It's so strong, because it dips in, it goes inside. Like it doesn't have any flex in it, right? Like the, uh, like the flat stock does, right? Remember, always blame uh, uh, the architect for cock ups. Yeah, right. Always blame the architect. Always. That's too funny. So it, it actually it's funny because it it did indeed uh, originate with an architectural error. <laughs> the uh, the the panel factory was was arguing that the um the the panel factory was arguing that the windows were too big. That the they that the panels and the walls would have no structural integrity if they used windows that big, and they told them to order new windows or to order the windows a different size. So they sent the 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 panels to site, built to the spec that to keep structural integrity. But the builder then didn't order new windows, and then the old window design showed up or something. I don't know. It, it was just a big cock up. Yeah, it was awful. And they paid 
they paid me I don't know almost three thousand dollars to fix it. So <laughs> no, not no no shitting. Okay, they paid me three grand plus they had to rent a lift, which probably cost them another grand. So four grand for it really cost them probably five grand to fix, right? Five grand to fix that, right? So big windows. Uh, I don't know if that would have like I don't know if ordering def I don't know if ordering new windows would have been cheaper or I don't know I don't know I don't know there's only there was like say there's only the four windows we had to fix right and um, the other ones we you know we added some stuff but uh, yeah yeah we, they were able to make it make it work for the most part but yeah it's just awful crazy man oh you see safety first I love these um, these uh, retractables are the best you know I did yes bid this job I bid this job uh, on by the uh, linear foot so I, I give a lump sum price actually I don't I I, I, I give them one price for everything and uh, like I have um, um, an hourly time and material uh, but this this these jobs here I, I bid all um, all lump sum so and, and I only priced the interior framing on on these jobs on I got and I already have three three other houses I've been awarded to do so and we'll starting one no I don't no no materials just just labor just labor they I I tell them I give them a list of what they need and they buy it I don't I don't price the material I only do install I don't mess with that stuff I don't do the material thing um, it's just, yeah, it's just, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to get into that, right? I mean, some small jobs, I will do the material, of course, like, but most of the time, 95% of the time, um, I'm not including materials only. Why not? I just, I just, it's just not my, I don't want to get into that. It's not my desire. Um, I, I'm a peace worker. I, I always, always consider myself a peace worker. Okay. I don't, I'm not a contractor. Even though I am, <laughs> but I, I I'm a peace worker. I don't want to start buying. I don't want to start dealing with that, um, just because I don't I don't have time, man. I I, I, I just want to show up and install and leave. Okay, that that's really it. I'll price a job, sure. Okay, um, and I'll and I'll do takeoff for them, but the exactly. There's just too many variables with materials, like the fluctuations and, and plus the buying power of the company. Most of the time, the companies that I'm working for have way better buying power, you know, uh, unless I can buy from uh, my supplier, FBM. They'll give me the best rate possible all the time. But um, yeah, prices are always fluctuating. And um, yeah, like we don't even really get into contracts, guys. Like I, I submit a price and then they send me an email back saying you got the job or whatever like that. Okay. I'm not like you know and i and i and i keep track of things i i'm legally protected yes but i don't i'm not getting into like you know big stuff and you know not anymore it's not my desire i just i'm in it to make money that's it and um i'm not i'm not looking to grow my business like i'm not looking to grow a, con a construction business um uh, i'm just i just want to do the work and get out that's it right and i'm doing this just for money <laughs> just for money to pay and help get my production company uh, started that's all i'm doing right i'm always going to teach steel stud um uh yeah foundation building materials yeah they're they're my guys they're uh they i i know like the, there's a guy over there i were i uh my rep or whatever he's awesome he's always hooking me up um i i just yeah i like fbm i, I always get the best prices from them they they always waive delivery fees and doesn't matter how small the the order is they always waive the delivery fee for me they're really good to me and um they've also helped me uh like they've g uh, given me discounts on stuff like the pouch like i i bought a, a 300 dollars pouch that i gave away one time here on the channel they they gave me a good discount on that you know uh, they're in colorado that's cool that's really cool okay so stop so <clears throat> This is the this is the thing, okay? So the drawings, the drawings, uh, the drawings tell you the 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 ceiling height in here is 19 foot something. So I order 20 foot studs because 20 foot studs gonna go like it, it, it like it's like down here. This is like 20 foot six or something like that to here, and it's almost like it's 20 foot something up here. Whatever, it doesn't matter. The point is, I only had 20 foot studs. So instead of putting like a piece of track and making the stud longer or moving the stud. You put a header in, okay? You just put a header in across, right? And it's the same thing, guys. When you're, when you say you got a pipe,
okay? A pipe going through the wall and your center lands somewhere where the pipe is, right? You put a header so that the center always lands. You don't put the, the freaking stud on either side of the pipe. You don't do that ever, 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 ever do that. You put a header in 100% of the time. Now, the reason for it is because you need to make sure that, that, that you can stagger your sheets, your joints, on both sides of the wall. And if you got a stud moved to either side of that pipe, you just screwed yourself. You just you just screwed yourself. You just limited to what limited yourself to how you can drywall or the drywalls can drywall. Um, don't be lazy. Always put headers in. Okay. Uh, this is a different situation. This is just like because the ceiling height is just too high. So I, you know it's more than twenty feet, right? So that's why I put that header in. And I had to do it over here too in the back. You can see right there. Okay. So crazy. I can't. I couldn't believe the the, the darn. Um, the drawings were really uh, different. <clears throat> so for non-load bearing, 22, tw uh, 20 gauge, 20 gauge, a hundred percent. On, uh, I, I like, actually prefer. I prefer twenty gauge over uh, over twenty five in any situation. But it's it's um it's a much better product than twenty five gauge. Uh, it's 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 just you know. Uh, but yeah, so for 22 foot high, I go 20 gauge. Yep. Uh, did you screw the stud on both sides? Yes. Always. I'm always screwing the studs in always on both sides of the stud. I'm squaring every single stud gets squared. I use my square top and bottom every stud. Okay. I am that anal. I am that anal. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's vaulted like this or what. It just I just do it. Hey, B Nor Nora Noravi? Is it Nor so Noravi? Noravi? Is that, did I get that right? Um how did you learn so much? No, I just um I just been in it in it for so long and um I I had excellent teachers. I really got lucky. Um I had amazing, amazing teachers. And that's what it comes down to, guys. It all comes down to um to how good your teachers teachers are my my journeyman uh peter uh like peter i, I don't know if he's no i'm not gonna say his whole name but peter was amazing uh scott was amazing uh chico was amazing i i learned from some really good guys and and because i was um a very high producer um and and good good quality and um in a in a, in a high high producer like a I, you know you got good quality, good production. I just attracted guys that, um, you know, wanted to work with me and wanted to team up or work with me. And um, I just got really lucky working with a lot of good people. I've seen bad, the bad stuff. I've seen some really bad stuff. I actually made a lot of money uh, into just as deficiency guy, you know, uh, going around fixing other people's stuff. And that, that when you're working in deficiencies, it teaches you a lot. But I think the, probably the most important thing I could say for uh, like e apprentice here. So advice for second year apprentice. So Jose, uh, Colin, good to see you, man. Welcome to the stream. Um, one of the one of the things is is you need to understand uh, drywall and steel stud. Okay, you you got to understand how things work. Um, and 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 I always look beyond the drawing, like uh, that my scope of work. So what I mean by that is I, I look at the entire wall and I and I see what what's going to be on the outside of it or inside of it. So say it's an exterior wall and there's going to be cladding and things like that, right? You need to you need to make sure you're um you're setting up the other trades for success in the future, right? And you're thinking about things like cladding and drywall and making sure everything works, okay? I don't want to overwhelm anyone or confuse anyone. It's not that hard, really. It's just having an understanding of it. And the more you look at it um, as you go, right, and you see it being applied, then uh, and the better you're going to get, right? The better you're going to get. So, um, but yeah, the biggest thing for uh, um, a second year is, like I was saying, like just just keep on you're, you're already there you're getting you're getting into it um <laughs> this guy kendall k are you loud or quiet is that a bot you want i wonder uh, the guy's saying the, the same thing every time um 
I I, uh, I I I would just say keep being a keep being a hard worker and and, and get yourself positioned into 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 uh, into someone who um, like so I learned a lot from the from peace workers too okay like good peace workers not 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 cut corner peace workers um, good peace workers and um, you you want to you want to learn the systems that you got to be like a, like I'm saying like a trained robot in this trade in any trade almost okay you want to Thing, don't start getting creative. Um, you, you like like I was saying. For example, when you look at my drywall, okay, every job, the the screws, um, this the screws are always in the same spot every single time, and that's because, like I say, there's only one spot, the right spot to put them. Okay, so just yeah, you gotta just be consistent, be very strict with yourself. You know, have a lot of discipline. It's really not that hard. Uh, if you study the plans for hours, you will get it. Yeah, yeah, you will. Um, uh, take as much opportunity as you can to look at prints, and don't do it like during work hours, okay? But like on coffees and, and lunch, uh, uh, if your foreman is a good guy, he'll he'll show you some stuff, right? But get comfortable with the drawings. That's important because you start want your by now you're 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 really want going to be getting into laying out everything. Okay, you want to get into a lot of layout, and you need to understand just the basics of like you know laying out ceilings and doorways and you know checking for your your like you know high sides and low sides and um, and going off your high sides right, <laughs> getting things nice. So you're hey Christina, oh my goodness, how are you, girl? Thank you so much. That's so kind of you. That's so kind of you. You're the best. I, we just seen uh, Eddie was in, uh, uh, here this morning. I wonder if he's still here. Uh, okay, which button is this? Let me see. Is it this one? Thanks for the super chat, eh, Hoser? Uh, was that it? Did that say thank you? I think it did. <laughs> <laughs> what a joker. What a joker. Let's do it again. Thanks for the super chat, eh, Hoser? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the one. I'm sorry, Christine. Oh, my God. That's so wonderful to see you. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. How's everybody doing? How's the family? How's the girls? Um, how's, how's your girl doing in, in, uh, in uh, university? Is she doing well? Oh, my God. Christina's getting a new studio. Oh, my God. Are you getting like a, like a mini house or something? Like a, one of the, like a box house or something or a box something? Okay, Woody. Oh my God. Spoiler. Can you tell us? Is it going to be like a like a? So you're getting a new studio. So I'm thinking it's coming on a truck, right? Like a like a sea can type or a box, like a mini box house, something. Oh my God. Take the yeah. So also too yeah. So Jose yeah. Um, I have if you email me Chris at constructioncronies.com, I can send you stuff too. Eddie says I can't say. Okay, no worries, no worries. That's okay. That's okay. No problem. I'm gonna be totally, totally waiting for that. That is wicked. Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> man, oh man. I, 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 I could just imagine. I, I, I could just. I, I think. It, I think I'm right there. Let's start taking a poll. What do you think? <laughs> oh, that's really nice. Thank you so much for the super chat, Christina. I uh, and I, I I've been man. Your streams are just pumping. I can't believe it, man. Every every time, uh, you got like hundreds, like hundreds of people in your streams. This is fantastic. I know. I I, I try. I say hello uh, sometimes, but it's like, oh my god, there's so many, um, so many people. It's awesome. Uh, okay, so yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So if you email me at chris at constructioncronies.com, buddy, I'll I'll totally send you some examples of drawings and stuff like that and if you if you want just to look i have a i have a lot of blueprint videos as well that'll help you um i'll help explain them to you so if you need um if you need some extra help with that I, there's a blueprint video i have a playlist just on on prints so um and, and i'll be doing more more lessons as well so but yeah anyways i hope that helps hope that helps <laughs> my goodness yeah this this house christina was in crazy like i i i'm kind of i'm still like we're gonna be framing the next one uh right behind this one next so i can't wait to see where this one's at now okay right here this is it okay watch so you see where i put my tape on the bottom of the of the header that's a door header right there you see that little mark 21 and a quarter okay that's them that's the number 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, cut my header studs. So the studs that go in the door header, I'm first before I cut the total height, I'm going to count, go to the first knockout, measure down 21 quarter and cut it. Then I'm going to cut the stud to height. So that way the knockouts are all going to line up so that the channel goes through. Okay. So if you're, if, if, if you're not putting channel in the wall, cause sometimes headers are really small. Okay. If you're not putting channel, this doesn't, this doesn't apply, but this is how you make sure the knockouts line up for your, for your, for your channel and stuff and in your header studs, that's a door header, right? So that, that's just a little, little trick. But yeah, there you see, there, just, that's what lines up, lines up, lines up. <laughs> mm -mm. Man, I wonder what, it's going to be a box house or something like that, you know, like one of those little mini homes or something. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be like a little mini house. If I remember, you have a big backyard. You have a big yard, I think, if I remember correctly. So, hmm. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna put it in the driveway <laughs> but yeah that's beautiful it's like that so the the channel always lines up guys and like I was saying headers like that's a big header because that that's a pocket door going in here that's a pocket door so it's twice as wide as a normal opening and when it's closed up then uh, then so this will be filled in here sorry right this will this will then be the door here and this will be uh your pocket door right and then the the pocket doors usually come they have rails where the centers are and but they're not normally going to line up to the centers on the wall which is unfortunate if you don't have it on site you can't line the centers up so it's just it just is, is what it is uh in in this situation here too we're being very careful if you're being very careful Oh yeah, there you go. If you're in Colorado, there, uh, Jose, you got you get some work from David. Uh, you got to be very careful. This is where the uh, this is where the stairs do come up. This is the hallway, right? But yeah, you see all the clips, right? It's just it's just you got to be. The smell of roost chicken is filling the air. Nice, buddy. Oh yeah. I had a I had a roasted chicken the other night. That just was so good. Uh, I love the I love roasted chicken. Oh man, very nice. I had one uh, on uh, was it? I, I got one for the kids uh, the other night. Okay, so you got we're building we're building scaffolding up up here. So you got to plan ahead, and we're building the scaffolding as we work our way out. Okay, um, New York City. Oh, you're in New York City. Hey, we I actually know somebody in who's we we do have some people in New York too. New York is um, New York is 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 a is uh, is awesome because you you are going to be building some crazy cool stuff. Um, safety guy, safety, extra safety uh, courses. Are we buffering? All right, uh, extra safety courses, guy. Like get your um, uh, uh, lift tickets and your fall arrest and. Uh, all your, um, yeah, like get anything extra safety. Get lots of safety tickets, guy. Uh, it, it'll prepare you for being a foreman, okay? So right now between your second and like your second year, you're starting to start thinking about um, about what's next. And, and you can go piecework, okay? Or you can go company, right? And go into being a foreman and management and things like that. So thinking about tomorrow, always think about your future. So take extra courses at night, even in, in construction project management, take extra safety courses. That's what I did, right? So when it came time where I knew enough of the actual work and could install it quick enough to actually make money if I went piecework, that's what I did. I went piecework. So when you're a piece worker, you gotta make sure you're all safetyed up and, and everything because you gotta be able to get onto these sites, okay? And if you're in a big city like that, a lot of union uh, stuff in New York, you you gonna have the more you have under your belt, um, ticket wise, like an extra education, the more they'll pay you, the more you'll make, right? Of course, it's through the like becoming a safety officer type thing, okay? Um, because if you if you get your uh, full safety officer training, you will you already have enough experience to get fully certified. You only need two years of in the field experience to be fully certified. So 
having that extra ticket, being a full safety officer ticket, it's not that hard to get. It's pretty cheap, and it just opens so many more doors for you, okay? But, yeah, think, start thinking about that. Just keep your future in mind, that's all, you know? Take uh, some extra project management, management courses at night, whatnot, estimating and stuff like that, depending on what, where you want to go and what you want to do, you know? Um, just remember, you're not going to be on the tools forever, right? Um, look around and, and, and see the older guys who are still, like, you know, wearing pouches and, like, one foot in the grave. It's awful. But, yeah, no, I really love, I love apprentices. We need so many more apprentices. My God, we're, we're all understaffed. Everywhere in the world, we're, we're understaffed. We need more people. And I, I, love the, I love all these apprentices that come here. You know, it's amazing. The unions and stuff like that and the apprenticeship uh, guys use my videos for training and stuff, which is great. Um, so <laughs> there's a, if I can actually get most of the time up here in this loft, <laughs> line laser and a pin laser, right? We got the pin laser there plumbing up. See, I got my clips. And a marking level on all my clips. Okay, so I want to I want to explain something on uh, as well. So when you're framing a wall the other way, okay, and it's not running up the vaulted ceiling part. So if you get, if you know what I mean by that, um, you see how this going up this way. Okay, we have the trusses, but now you got this wall that's running against the trusses. So what are we gonna do? All we're gonna do is we're gonna put braces on the truss down to the middle of the top. As long as nothing sticks out the front or the back, you're good, okay? Because the drywall is gonna finish straight up. So let's see if we got another close up of that somewhere, just to kind of show you. I think I got a, there is a brace here. Oh, bummer. But the, the end braces are critical, of course. Uh, right there, right there. Okay, so you see this brace? That's what I'm talking about. This is what we're gonna do right here. Okay, this is just a stud, and you see how I screw it in? Okay, <laughs> both sides. That's so it doesn't, uh, you know, move up and down. Okay, it's it's nice and strong, and I'm screwing it into the truss, and um, I'm screwing it into the track, obviously. Okay, where level is. But, my God, that's so nice of Christina. Thank you so much. I, it's so good to see you, too. My God, she's just killing it on YouTube, man. She is killing it, guys. Like, I, I think you got over, almost 200,000, if not more, 200,000 subscribers. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> she does a really good job. But, yeah. So, I, I got, like I was saying, so they're running this way. And that's it. You just use braces. And if you're connecting track to track, what I'll do at the end of the of the track is just cut a fishtail, a fishtail, and, and slip it in. And then I'll have um, uh, like I'll have like what I do is I have Lamb hold a like a loose stud in and just hold the track into into level so I can find out where the brace goes. So this also takes two guys as well, right? I, I'm gonna have Lamb. He's gonna hold, a, hold put a stud in. And he's gonna hold the hold the track for me until I can just get the brace clamped in, and then the then the um, then the wall clamped into where it's level. And then I screw it all together, right? I just want to say though, don't screw the track flat. Don't screw the track flat, though, because what happens, you got to like a job slash jobs wanted post spot in your Discord. That would be cool. I would definitely post hourly and piecework on there all the time for jobs in Colorado. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Don't. Hey, man, go ahead. Go ahead. If you shout out Colorado in the Discord, if there's anyone in Colorado who needs a job. Go ahead, feel free, man. That's a, that's what it's for. It's for networking, guys. It's for networking and, and sharing information, and you know, for entertainment and friendship, all that. It's for all that stuff. If you if you do you want to post job job things in in the Discord, by all means, post it. Uh, so yeah, when you're going against the trusses, you don't screw the track flat, obviously, because it's gonna be. <clears throat> gonna be like like this 
right? And and the studs won't 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 they won't go in. The studs won't catch at the front. Right? So sure, yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah, no problem, buddy. No problem. That that big, yep. Yeah, <laughs> this guy, that's hilarious. I don't even know what's up. What is this guy? <laughs> yeah, there, and that's another brace. That's just angle. That's heavy gauge angle, okay? And it's perfect, man. You can see in this one here, you'll be able to see, uh, aw, did I move that? Or no, it's this one. Right, so the drywall is going to finish straight up into the ceiling, and those braces are going to be completely hidden. Now, I'm saying you don't want to screw it flat to the trusses when you're going against them because it's just, it's just, it's just not going to work. Like you're not going to the cat, the stud won't, um, won't come in. Right? Yeah, it's crazy house to frame, right? I know, dude. It's it's wild. Like this is only the top floor. I got some other stuff for the other floors as well. Uh, I got. I'll actually be publishing some videos on headers and bulkheads and stuff soon, but. Um, yeah, and I, like the next one, we're, we're doing the whole thing. We're doing all the exterior and interior, so that'll be cool. Now just plumb up the end. That that window was in the wrong spot. We had to move it. Like it, it's in a closet. Like that's a closet where it, where it is currently, and we had to move it to the outside, right? So they the, they put the panel in backwards, guys. They put the panel in backwards. The window's supposed to be on the outside where that other red X. But yeah, using stubs like this here to catch the track. Um, this is the ten foot stud now. Where on the other side, you see how it go? I was able to get this is six inches, and it I had the whole height. Well, the this is a this ceiling was at like ten foot six, so I added a like a, a whatever a eight inch piece of stud there to catch my um, to catch my track. There, that's the end of the wall where that dot is. I plumbed up the end. And we're going to have floaters. These are still going to be floaters as well up there for the drywall to pass through. And and that's where a lot of the strength comes from too as well is, is when you're screwing your floaters in like that. Um, it, it's, it's a, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You get a lot of strength from, from the drywall is what I meant, right? When you screw... That's why you always oh, oh here this is this is I'm showing you uh, where to get the numbers where to hold your tape measure and get the uh, get the numbers from so you kind of can visually see what I've been trying to draw with uh, whatever but so you see how the 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 flange is on the outside you literally got to plumb up every single stud on on the on the slope on this vaulted ceiling okay you always go on the center. But yeah center okay, and sure center okay. And I'm taking it from the the right side on this on this instance because that's where it's going to hit the track first, right? It's going to hit the track on the right side, so I'm taking that number. You get that? And then I'm saying if the if the flanges are thicker, just move it further to the right, okay? Right to the center, right to the center, and center. Taking the number from the 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 side that's going to hit first. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So right there, I'll be like 56 quarter. Right, that one right there will go 56 quarter, or 56 three eighths. Okay, and if it's too tight like that, all you got to do is when it's when it's when it's the when it's hard side out like that, just just clip your flange like that on a bit of an angle. All right, that's 20 gauge stud. Oh yeah, Klein guy's in New York for sure. Yeah, he's an electrician. And then there, boom, perfectly on center, right? So yeah, this is a little trick to kind of help you out there. That works for you know X braces everything, right? Um, that's why I have a grinder. That's why I have a grinder is for doing exterior X braces. That's why I bought it actually, so I can cut the little angle. 
<laughs> on, and that's what I mean. It's a frivolous thing. You very, very rarely use a grinder, okay, um, in in steel stud, okay. You don't really use it a lot, okay. Um, but yeah, with that, see, I'm squaring over every single stud, top and bottom, and screwing it in top and bottom. If I can't, like, say, I'm I'm doing, I'm, if I'm doing light gauge, and uh, I can't, I, I don't have access to the backside of the stud. I'm still, I'm still crimping it. I'm still, I'm still crimping it, and I'm not like. Like I was saying, when you use crimpers, okay, it has you. You just punch, okay. One, you don't go all the way. You do not go all the way with your crimpers, okay. You just punch that one punch. Uh, crimpers will go boom, boom, okay. You just want that one first, first, okay. That's the strong one, okay. You don't go full bitch crimp. <clears throat> you can't crimp uh, twenty gauge. You can't crimp anything heavy gauge, um, but if you uh, clamp and screw like if it's just a block wall on the other side with an inch airspace okay you can clamp and screw through the um, the back side of this you can, uh, you can screw from the flange of the stud through the track if you, if you really need to screw it in okay the thing is with with heavy gauge stud it, it's more strong anyway the reason why we always uh, do the crimping on the light gauge uh, like on the frost walls is because it's so flimsy right the light gauge is so flimsy you know But yeah, yeah, that's a crazy little house, man. Crazy little house. But you can see here, that's a long wall that's running against the the trusses, right? So you just braced it up, just using the braces. Okay, just like that. Boom, and we're done. We're done the video. So yeah, that's. Uh, that is it for uh, for the lessons today. So if you have any questions, this now it is question and answer period. <laughs> what what did I bid uh, per square foot uh, to frame that house? So um, I didn't I actually. <laughs> what did I charge? Um, what did I charge on that one? I want to say I did it all for six fifty a foot. A foot. When I when I when I do steel stud, um, I I generally charge linear foot. Uh, you can charge by the square foot. Um, like sixty cents is a good number. Um, uh, like forty to sixty cents. Okay, and, and depending on like the uh, the like just how hard it is, right? Um, you got to be, you'll get good at estimating the more jobs you price, the better you're going to get at it, obviously. Right. So, um, you just gotta, you're just going to learn over time. You're going to, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some and, um, and you're going to learn, you're just going to learn how to price your jobs. The more you do, right. It's a, uh, it's crazy. It, it's too bad that everything just isn't a standard rate, honestly. Like, um, it, I think it would be better if it almost was, uh, if everyone got paid the same and then, um, then based on your quality is how you get work, not on price, you know, that would be better. Um, yeah, that's just, uh, that's just how I feel, you know, um, it's, it's crazy that you got to negotiate every freaking job. You work for the same guy for years and still every freaking job, every job you're negotiating prices. That's really frustrating and annoying. Right. Um, like I was saying, I'm a peace worker. I'm not a, I'm not a contractor. I like, you know, I do take on contracts and I and I do bid or price based on a lump sum and stuff like that. But I'm really just a peace worker. Right. So um, I don't want like I just I don't like pricing jobs. I don't I don't I just just give me the job. Pay me my rate. Like, that's all I want to do. Show up, install and leave. But no, I got to price every job. And oh, my God. Right. So. <laughs> but um Oh well, that's okay. I, I, soon, soon enough here. That's I'll be just teaching you guys how to price your jobs and estimate and do all this stuff. That's all I want to do. Just teach and advocate from now on. Uh, I I don't really have a whole lot of interest in um, staying in the field for too much longer. Um, it's just it's just uh, like I was saying. Like we like like I want to make drive good changes. You know, out there. Um, just the current state of everything and and uh, it just I don't no matter what I'm charging. It's still not enough. It's not enough. Like, you know, I feel like it is, I'm working for peanuts still, you know, even when I charge good, I, I just don't feel like it's like I'm getting paid fairly. You know, I never get feel like I'm getting paid fairly and, um, that's just not right. You know, I, I just, I don't know. I don't, you guys know what I mean, I bet, but it, it's better in like other places. We're really, we're, we're, we've been hit really hard here where I am in Alberta 
I was saying we're the lowest paid in the entire country by a real long shot. And we're the only province that doesn't have unions. So right there, that tells you what the problem is. You know, we need the unions here to uh, stabilize the uh, the rates and make it more fair for workers, man. Like, just crazy. It's crazy. Woohoo! Well, I'm getting kind of tired. How long have we been on for? How long is the stream going for? Holy cow, we've been going for over two hours. Holy cow, that's amazing. I love it. I, I really love it. I streamed last night for an hour and a half. And so we're we're going on in almost two and a half hours today. Um, I know, I know, Mandeep, you're right. Always, right? It's so frustrating. Uh, it's awful. Like, I, I hate it because... You know, like you build, you you bid and you bid and you bid. You do more pricing. Once you start pricing jobs, you guys, you got to be very careful of this, okay? Trust me. This is a big, this is another uh, pro tip. Don't get caught being, um, uh, be, here, you need my email? I'll, I'll uh, oh, you did send the info. Okay, perfect. Good stuff. Good stuff, buddy. Yeah, I'll send, I'll send you something later on. Um, uh, uh, once I get, uh, um, I'll, I'll send it soon. I'll send it soon. I'll check my email uh, right after the stream, and I'll send it pretty soon. Uh, just give me like an hour, and I'll and I'll get it done. But it, it it's true. It, you you don't get caught in the trap of pricing jobs to people that don't give you jobs back. Okay, um, this happens a lot because everyone wants to price shop. Everyone wants to shop your prices, and that's actually illegal i think that's actually illegal i believe but um the, everyone does it it's just a most unethical thing in the world but it's it's um don't get caught in that trap okay if you, if a guy if a guy keeps coming to you for prices but never gives you a job just tell him no i'm not giving you any more prices until you give me a job i'm sorry it takes time and money to estimate okay and that's what all these guys don't understand that's what the guys that, that work with me as as partners don't understand is i'm here pricing jobs I'm calling everybody trying to get jobs. I'm lining all the work up. I'm like, I'm doing all this stuff. Right. And then, and then, and then comes the, the, the money. And then I got, and then all of a sudden I got to do payroll. Right. None of these guys, all these guys, all they have to do is show up and work. Right. And man, I've never had a thank you. You know that? I don't think I've ever had a thank you from anyone for, for, for what I do. I just do what I do. I don't think anyone's actually ever thanked me for, for it, you know? And I feel like everyone always says, where's my money? 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 You know, I'm like, it's just like, fuck, man. Like, and I'm the best. As soon as I get paid, boom, the very first thing I do every time as I send everyone their money. That's the first thing, okay? And, and I have a rule, and everyone knows it. You guys get paid when I get paid, okay? That's how it goes. And, I'm, and that's the other thing. I'm always fighting for money to the people ahead of me, okay? I'm always fighting for money. Every fucking time I'm fighting for money, always trying to get it. Pay me, pay me. You're late. You're late. Everyone's always late. And uh, it's so frustrating. Like, these assholes don't understand all the work I do for them. And it's just like, you know, that's another reason why I'm kind of like, I'm not in it. I'm only half in it because people are weird, you know? Like, don't be that guy, right? Always maybe thank, your, thank the guy who's getting you work once in a while or something, you know? Or try, to, or try to help him out in some way, right? To be helpful. Just be very helpful. And, and understand, like, man, it's so annoying when I tell people, I tell these guys, I'm like, yeah, okay, so we're going to get paid... Um, on this day or whatever, a week before that day. Hey, do we get paid yet? 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 I'm like, holy shit, man. Like, <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's crazy. I, I never ripped any guy off in my life and I'm not about to. So, um, I, like I said, the guys I've had for you so long, I, I've been ripped off, but I've always made sure they've always gotten paid as well. So say I don't get paid for a job. I've always, it would just happen a few times. Okay. I've always made sure the guys are paid, always. And it's not my freaking responsibility. They're supposed to be my equal even, right? And and, and I'm the guy who's, you know, just uh, just whatever, man. That's why I, I kind of like this YouTube thing. And uh, it's like, it's, I don't need anyone, really. I just, I do my, I do all of it myself now, you know. Um, it's, just, it's just hard when you have to rely on other people. And it, just be, it would be better if everyone could be reliable. Just be reliable, right? Just try to be a reliable person, a good person, you know. <laughs> I got you back. I totally lost YouTube. Oh yeah, who knows what's been going on? But I'm gonna shut her down. Uh, I gotta get some work done today. It's already afternoon. It's crazy. So uh, I'm off this week, guys. So I'm gonna do some more streams. 
and uh, I got a lot of testing to do, and I'm gonna have to figure out this uh, drop frame thing. I, but this is that's it. This week, I'm I'm either gonna fix VMix or I'm going to OBS. So I want to thank everybody for coming today, and thank you again, Christina, for the super chat. You guys, you're the best, and and Jose, you're you're very welcome. Everyone's so welcome. It, it's crazy. Uh, so yeah, I've heard of some guys charging a percent based uh, transparent price. 10 profit with the general contractor for guaranteed work. Yep. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, yeah, that, that there's all kinds of backdoor deals in this industry, guys. It's not a, it's not, it's a, it's probably the most corrupt business out there. Okay. If you, if you can tell me of a more corrupt business, please tell me. I, cause I don't know it. Um, the, the construction business is so shady. Maybe the film business, it would be more shady. But, um, yeah, so yeah, both, both businesses I work in. Right. But anyways, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a very, you gotta be very careful. You gotta, you gotta be careful. Be an ethical guy. Okay. Just because the other guys are doing it don't, doesn't mean you, you should. Okay. Um, I never had a problem getting work really. It's just, it's frustrating because you're always competing with, with guys like that. Right. It's, it's just, it's just tough. It is tough. But, um, at the end of the day, my jobs are always good. I know I can sleep at night. I know nothing's going to come back on me and I know there's no, no guys out there trying to kill me. Right. Because I didn't pay them, you know? Um, but yeah, it, it's just, it is what it is, but yeah, dibs, no worries, man. But we can talk in the discord. I'll be, I'll be back. I'm just gonna, I just got to run to the store and then I'll be back in like 30 minutes. We'll say, and I'll be on the discord. If anyone, anyone wants to chat more in the discord too later, I'll be there. Um, but yeah, until then guys, until next time, this is Chris. Bye for now. Be safe out there, everybody. Thank you so much for coming guys. <laughs> Outro. <laughs>